I look at the function as x minus 1 over x squared, but every time I see one term, I will always think in these terms. So x over x squared is 1 over x minus 1 over x squared. You can say I don't want to do this because I'd rather you use the quotient rule. Fine. That's fine. I prefer this instead of using the quotient rule. You develop your own style. So f prime of x, when I differentiate this, I get negative 1 over x squared. Yeah, for this one, I have to write x to negative 2. So I have positive 2, x to negative 3. Negative 1 over x squared plus 2 over x to the third. The least common denominator must be x to the third. And this must be multiplied by x. So negative x plus 2. Yes, I will factor out negative 1 because it's easier to find the critical numbers. So then f prime of x equals negative x minus 2 over x cubed. And critical number is only x equals 2. And of course, everything is going to end up uh, being squeezed in here, right? You know that. I hope not. Okay. So I have to study the sign. To the left of 0, this is negative. Um, I have to plug in a number. So negative 10. Uh, negative 10 with minus 2 is negative, with minus in front is positive, but the denominator is negative. Uh, I'm going to plug in 1. The numerator is negative, positive, with minus in front. I'm going to plug in 10. Positive, positive, with minus in front. So, I needed a little bit more space, so I had to move the positive infinity further to the right. Okay. Now I have to plug in the function 2. I need this ordered pair, x comma y. So when I plug in 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 over 4. So now I have to make sure that the two rows I have in the table work well together. If they do, then, then I'm in business. If they don't, then I have to go back to the drawing board. From 0 to negative infinity, yep, that's correct. From negative infinity to 0, yes, that's correct. From 0 to 0 0.4, 0 0.25, yes, that's correct. From 0.25 back to 0, yes, that's correct. So far, so good. Now I have to analyze the second derivative. And of course, this is a relative max. For the second derivative, I am going to use this first derivative, not this one. So f prime of x equals negative x to negative 2 plus 2 x to negative 3. This is what I want to differentiate to get the second derivative. 2 x to negative 3 minus 6 x to negative 4. Uh, 2 outside. 1 over x to the third minus 3 over x to the fourth. Um, the least common denominator is x to the fourth, and this one needs an x, so x minus 3. So the second derivative is 0 when x is 3. Of course, as I said, yeah, everything has to be right here in my face. Uh, they couldn't be somewhere else. I'm kidding, of course, that's the function. Okay, so this is always positive. I'm not going to waste my time with it. To the left-hand side of 3, negative. 
does not hold water, and to the right hand side of, C, of 3 positive holds water. And I have to plug in 3. When I plug in 3, I get uh, 3 minus 1, which is 2 over 9, of course. 1 over 4, 2 over 9. How would I graph that? I'll find a way. Okay, so that's it. So this is the IP. 3 comma 2 over 9 is the inflection point. This is it. Done. We can't find anything else. That's all we need. And now we are ready to graph. I don't care for anything else. Everything else is gibberish. When I graph a function with asymptotes, I have to graph the asymptotes first. Well, it's an overkill because this is one and this is the other. So x equals zero, y equals zero. Then I will plot the points that I have. I have one comma zero. I have two comma whatever and um, and I have 2 over 9 somewhere here so 1 2 and 3 now opening down decreasing from 0 to negative infinity it cannot be easier on that side okay now on the other side, it's coming from negative infinity, increasing to zero, opening down, getting to a maximum. Here it is, the first piece. It got to a maximum. It decreased to 2 over 9, where it changes concavity, opening up, getting closer and closer to the asymptote. So I'm going to graph this a little bit bigger. Maximum continues to the inflection point, changes concavity. So this is a zoom in, zoomed in area here. Up to a maximum, decreasing to the inflection point, changing concavity, opening up. Very good pick. It was a very interesting problem. x minus 1 over x squared. And yes, yes, after your discovery, you should always check with the calculator. Why not? You have it. So in y equals, because now you know exactly what um, x and y, I'm sorry, what um, uh, window to choose and so on and so forth, because you already graphed it. But if you forget to put parentheses around the numerator, you will not graph what you should. Be very careful. There is no point in uh, uh, placing 0 here because it's going to be the x-intercept, the x-axis anyway. But if it's any other horizontal asymptote, you have to put it in by hand. The calculator will not show it to you. Okay, so now the viewing window. Because I want to see those tiny numbers, I'm going to say uh, x, yeah, between negative 4 to 4 will be okay. Oops, I meant this. With a scale of 1, y minimum, let's say negative 3, but y maximum y maximum, I wanted it to be 2 with a scale of 1. When I click enter, I should see that, that um, detail. If not, I'll change the viewing window again. It's fine. So let's see what we get. Correct? Uh, not very clear. Not very easy because I stopped at 4. So first of all, I'm going to adjust a little bit and say maybe x I'm going to stop at 6 so I can see that inflection point maybe and um, y maximum I'm going to say 1 
it should show better. Yes, so still not 100%, but it goes up to a maximum, comes down here where it has an inflection point and changes. Okay? I don't know. Maybe I should just focus on this area to see. Maybe I can show it to you better, but I, I'm sure you understood what I'm trying to. So I'm going to say uh, 0.5. Um, to okay, it can be six. Uh, y minimum zero, y maximum one. Okay. Okay. So it crosses at one zero, goes to a maximum, comes down to two comma two divided by nine, and right here it changes concavity, opening up. So please do not rely on the calculator. Uh, last week, last Monday, Aaron and I found, and also last Wednesday with Amanda, we found two errors in the calculator. The calculator cannot give you a correct integral if you put in an absolute value. So we can put in an absolute value, and we did, we got an error. Not an E-R-R-O-R, -R -R, but it was a error in the tolerance. So we got the exact answer, but the calculator gave us an error at the fifth digit or sixth digit or something. So careful, that is iffy. Uh, the other one was, what was the error that we got last Wednesday? Do you remember? Yeah, we got like an answer that was like 12 or something, but it it said that it wasn't. Yes, exactly. It, it had, yes, I don't remember what it was. It was, the problem itself was messy, but it came out to a nice number, but the calculator couldn't tell us the answer. Yep, it couldn't give us, it was outside of a range or something. Something like that, but it was, the answer was like 12. It, it was this problem. I yes. went through it, click, 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 back, back, back. So it sits there for a while. And I don't want to, so that's the problem. It sits there for a while and it realizes that it cannot calculate this. And it says, oops, error. So don't assume that you made an error when you get something like this. Okay, so it cannot give us an answer. But the answer was very simple. But the calculator could not calculate it. And the other one was with the absolute value. I have um, a problem. I was working on it while you were working yes. on that. Just um, one, one question. So is, is this what you meant? Uh, did you understand the steps, uh, Talia? Yes, this was perfect. Thank you. Okay, very good. Yes, I'm ready for the next problem. Let me see the time here. Oh, 13. That's fine. It's a second video. I have to check because sometimes I, uh, oh, I exceed 20 minutes and I try to keep it at 20 minutes. Yes, I'm ready. So it's another max min. Uh, so this one is f of x equals natural log of uh, x squared plus 3x plus 10. Uh, Are we given an interval? Two to one. I'm sorry? Negative 2 to 1. Good. So, first of all, uh, we get the table going. Uh -huh. Negative 2 to 1. f prime of x and f of x. And... Um, f prime of x will be 1 over x squared plus 3x plus 10 multiplied by the inner function prime, which is 2x plus 3. Right. So when I set this equal to 0, I get x equals negative 3 divided by 2, uh -huh. or negative 1.5. Yes, I have all of that. So then to the left, so this is always positive. 
It has to be, otherwise natural log does not exist. So then to the left of, of negative 3 um, over 2 or negative 1 fifth, like negative 2, this will be negative. And on the other side, it will be positive. So now in the function, I have to plug in these numbers. So I will go to y equals. And I will punch in natural log of x squared plus 3x plus 10. You had this problem uh, on the previous test. And negative 2, negative 1.5, and 1. Wow, that close, really. Okay, 2.0794, 2.0477, and 2.6391, okay. Okay, so from 0 0.7 to 0 0.4 is decreasing, and to 6.3 is increasing. So this is, this point, is the absolute and relative minimum. Is that uh, 4, 7, 7, or 9, To seven, 4. Seven. Oh, let me look again. 2, oh, 4, 7, 7. Okay. So this is the absolute and relative minimum. This is the absolute max, because it's 2.63. And this is the absolute min. Oh, this is nothing. Okay. Nothing. We already found the absolute min. Can you go back? How did you know it was? Uh, decreasing and then increasing? Uh, because um, when I plug in in the derivative, uh, negative 2, I got negative. And when oh, I plug right, in the right. derivative 1, I got positive. And from 2.07 to 2.04 is decreasing indeed. And from 2.04 to 2.63 is indeed increasing. Thank you. Sure.